Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we will be talking about five common mistakes people make when doming with resin. This applies to both UV and two-part resin, but before we get started, I like to make this very clear. Doming only works on flat pieces with straight edges, so it won't work on curved or rounded pieces, all right? So I just want to make that clear. Okay, so doming. Doming is a process commonly used to give flat resin pieces more dimension with a glossy finish. It seals and magnifies whatever is underneath it. Great technique to use for shaker charms, bezel charms, coasters, and more. So, mistake number one, not working on a level surface or doming uneven pieces. This is probably the most common mistake people make. Resin is self-leveling on a level surface, so any deviation from that will cause the resin to move towards that direction, resulting in overspills. So, use a leveler to level your work surface and the pieces you are doming. I've purchased handmade molds in the past that were not made on an even surface, which created uneven resin pieces. This is why it's important to check your pieces as well before doming. Now, here's a tip. Using a silicone mat or a doming mat is helpful to stabilize your pieces while you dome. For smaller pieces, since they're too lightweight, the silicone mat can't stabilize them too well. So, in this case, I recommend mounting them on these reusable sticky pads. Mistake number two, putting too much resin. The process of doming is basically using its surface tension. So if you put too much, it will cause the surface tension to break, resulting in overspills. So always start with a small amount. Spread the resin carefully to the edges using a detailing tool like this one. I'll link down my favorite tool down below. But you can also use a toothpick or a scriber tool. If you see the resin pulling away from the edges, that means there's not enough resin. So add more, but one drop at a time so you don't put too much. Mistake number three, using low viscosity resin. Low viscosity resin will have a harder time maintaining its surface tension and will not create a nice full dome. So it's best to wait until the resin cures slightly thicker before doming. I would say until the viscosity becomes similar to syrup. However, many low viscosity resin is not designed to be used as a coating or doming resin to begin with. They are made for casting. So you may have problems with the finish, including blemishes, amine blushes, and fisheye problems. This is why I use resin specifically designed for coating and doming. The brand I'm currently using is listed in the description box. Mistake number four for two-part resin is not covering your pieces while curing. The sole purpose of this is to protect your dome from dust settling on the resin resulting in imperfect finish. You want a flawless finish that is smooth and shiny. So I like to use containers that are see-through so I can see my pieces in case I need to keep checking on them. But before covering your pieces, I recommend wiping it down on the inside with a wet wipe to remove any potential dust or lint. For UV resin, mistake number four is not letting your resin rest before curing. Letting it rest will give the resin time to relax and degas more bubbles to the surface. I would say around five to 10 minutes or so. By doing this, you will avoid two types of flaws on the dome surface. First one is bumpy texture from the bubbles and two, you will avoid swirly texture. 
The swirls are actually from the mixing process. So in my head, I picture it as agitated resin particles or molecules all fired up from the mixing and when you cure it right away, you've basically froze them in that chaotic state. So letting it rest will relax them and will create a smooth cured finish. I hope that makes sense. Mistake number five, doming pieces with sharp angles. This has not been a problem until acrylic laser cutters started making resin molds. They make molds out of any designs without considering how resin works. So domed resin cannot maintain its surface tension around these angles, so it will break and spill. Also, resin tends to pull away from sharp points like these, and no matter how much resin you add, it won't flow into it. If you look at commercially produced molds, you won't see this problem. So if you are going to buy handmade molds, and you know that you're going to have to dome them, avoid sharp angles and points, and look for pieces with rounded angles and edges. Now, I know some crafters use liquid latex to avoid overspills from ruining their pieces. It's almost as if they expect the resin to spill every time they dome. However, if you follow these tips, you wouldn't have to use it at all. I mean, I've been working with resin for almost eight years and never had to use it. The only time I would have overspills is when I made one of these five mistakes. So I hope this video was helpful for many of you. If it was, hit me a like and subscribe if you haven't. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!